Hey guys, Sen here. Dragon Cliffs used to be the hardest district in the clan capital until the minor nation attacked. Suddenly, with the release of Goblin Mines, Dragon Cliffs became the most pathetic district ever. 10 miners on one tile, 2 frosts inside the base, and you could force quit and 2 shot every single Dragon Cliffs. But Supercell has brought down the hammer, Miner has taken two significant nerfs, and Dragon Cliffs is no longer a trivial base, especially maxed out cliffs, and you have to be more careful if you want to two shot them. And today, we're going to be showing you what you can still do to make the Dragon Cliff two shots happen, because it's still not as difficult as it was before, but it's not completely trivial these days. So especially after the second minor nerf, maxed out dragon cliffs are not that easy to take out with two sets of minor spam attacks now. So if you do want to take out every dragon cliffs in two attacks, you do have to use a little bit of your brain, but not all of it. Let me explain. So generally speaking, the main weakness of Miner against Dragon Cliffs is when there's a lot of grouped up buildings that are high HP, especially when they're maxed and have the maxed HP. There's a lot of buildings that can stall your miners above ground, and when there's dragons covering those sections of the bases that are really compact, they can shoot down your miners in huge groups, and you might not even three-shot the base if you're not careful, and just like, especially the district hall, because it has the most HP and keeps your miners above ground for a very long time. So generally speaking, on the first attack, I try to determine if I can miner spam both hits. In this case, this is max, which is and very compact in the core here, which means we want to come in with something to remove the core, and then we can just minor spam the rest. So in this case, I think that Sparky is actually the right call. You might think I'm crazy, but hear me out. A Sparky Rage starting on top of the Spear Thrower is absolutely huge. It chains down the Bomb Tower Wizard Tower, and that will funnel the Sparky if I jump her over the wall towards the Inferno Tower, towards all the dragons. I have to be careful about this left Inferno Tower because I can't frost this along with the right side Inferno Tower, but if I'm careful with my Sparky, I should still be fine and try to take that with Giants and maybe reset it with Hogs. I have Inferno Dragons to snipe the enemy supers as well as a barrel to take the air defenses for the Inferno Dragons and snipe them down, and then we have a Hog Rider in case the Inferno Dra Towers lock onto me. And so now let's go with this army. I don't usually recommend Sparky. Archer Rage is also a very good uh, way to do it, and I will show it in the next pack, but Sparky is the fun way to go against Dragon Cliffs, and let's go in. So we are now in, and you have to be extremely careful when there's a not Frost in Inferno Tower, especially on the flank like that, but we're going to Frost a ton of these defenses. Frost makes the Dragons so much more manageable, and I also will slow down a ton of defenses. This is money Frost right here. And we need a Rage Spell leading into the first Spear Thrower chain, so I'll drop an angle towards the left because I'm hoping the Sparky goes towards the Inferno Tower later on in the attack. So drop it like that, and then we will jump over, angle it more towards the right-hand side so we can avoid that Inferno Tower on the entry. And then we'll wait for the dragon to fly to the back side of the Dragon Post so we can take all the time we need in the world to set up because... Uh, I know that the attack will go by really, really fast. So now we're finally set up to go. Giant to go in the tank. Sparky to get a first huge shot. And hopefully jump herself outside of range of danger of the Inferno Tower. Perfectly done. And another huge shot right there. Barrel to tank. Inferno Dragon to snipe the enemy super. So like I said, you have to be extremely careful when there's an Inferno Tower on your flank. So another Giant to continuously tank. Make sure my Sparky is safe. Sparky is actually a little bit straying on me. Uh, that's unfortunate. She does get locked onto. Hopefully, we can reset it. Perfect. With the Hog Glider. That's why we brought it. Just in case we messed up a little bit. And Sparky's going to finish off that Inferno Tower. Chip down the Bomb Tower in behind. She's now still very healthy as she's moving her way down. She'll chain down the cannon off of... Or the Eye Drag is taking care of business. We'll finish off the cannon before she goes up and now we can just pull that dragon away from range of the air defense above it and then use an inferno dragon to snipe that as well so snipe that enemy super hopefully it doesn't fly outside of range it does so we'll have to tank the cannon a little bit longer and the sparky is doing a great job on her own still picking off a bunch of defenses Oh, those Inferno Dragons are being double agents, but that's still fine. And we have one more barb that uh, we can just clear the trash buildings in behind. And we are looking really solid. The entire core is gutted and we are perfectly set up for a minor spam finish. 
So we got a lot on that very first hit. There's only three dragons left. Now there's a lot of different ways you can finish off a base like this. You can use Golem, you can use another Sparky attack, but I think for most people, the easiest approach is just Miner. So that's what we're gonna show off right here. And I typically recommend that you cut one Miner for some barbs and some ramps, try to pull dragons in case uh, they start looking at your miners and when you're dropping down your frost with your miners spam you want to be considering where the dragons are going to be flying and trying to keep your miners safe from the dragons because those are the biggest threats on the base so we'll drop a frost uh, leading towards the first dragon and then a frost leading towards the second dragon try to cover some spear throwers as well for some bonus value over there we're not going to spam in all of our miners at the very start because there is a bomb tower so we will try to be a little bit careful about that so hopefully we can use that barb to distract a little bit. There is a log trap, it does a lot of damage. That was not a good barbarian because that forced me to use a zap. And now we'll use the rest of our miners on top of the spear thrower. And try to just overwhelm the base. Do need to be careful about this last dragon that we can't exactly frost so we'll try to pull it away with some barbs and some rams like so just slowly drag it away the other dragons are frosted up so we don't have to worry about them too much but that those dragons that are not being covered by the frost that is when they can actually shoot at your miners and deal a significant amount of damage so we've lost quite a few miners the nerf definitely can be felt from here but perfect only one split so we don't have to worry about that and we should have plenty of force left going into those last couple of defenses. At this point, the dragons can't catch up to the miners and we are home free. So we can just let those miners take out the rest of the buildings and we have taken out a max dragon cliffs in two attacks. And here we go up against a second Dragon Cliffs with an extremely compact backside that we really want to take out before we go in with our Miner Spam. This time we're going to come in with Archers because Archers are generally speaking a lot easier to make work. Sparky definitely works here as well with all these compact buildings over here to chain off of, but for most people that's a little bit too risky with the Inferno Towers and the Dragons. If you don't navigate the Dragons well with Sparky, it is an absolutely disgustingly bad play. And so Archers are just more practical and we'll just go in with this army. The approach on this base, you'll see that there's just one Spirit Thrower covering all these cannons and so we can remove that with a Rocket Balloon. And so we'll use a Barb to clear the trash on the approach and then use a pack of minions to help support and clear the trash buildings behind the rocket balloon. That bar will also check for any zap traps. Yes, it pulls the zap traps, so those rocket balloons are now safe to go in and pick off that spear thrower as we work our way inside. We bring the jump spell instead of a zap spell because, ooh, so many zaps over here, but we're gonna be able to save a ton of troop space worth of rams and that is definitely gonna be worth that one spell slot. Instead of trying to use a zap to try to reset infernos or anything like that, it's not very useful with archers. The jump buff is extremely good because that extra jump allows you to navigate through mazes and can usually save you a ton of troop space. So now we can finally use our jump over here. We might need to clear it. Nope, we do not. Now we can get started with our archers. One more round to open up the wall ahead or we do not need that. And now we'll rage leading into that first section. We haven't even dropped down a single pack of archers in the first minute of the attack. But just use those archers for rage to slowly chip down the buildings one at a time. And we're going to try to get both infernos. We'll also get a bunch of wizard towers and bomb towers because we're trying to push our way left. Finish off that inferno tower. We're going to grab the wizard tower hopefully. And we'll try to pull that right side dragon into the rage spell. Like so. Let those archers die out real fast, and then we'll pull that dragon into- or there's a bomb. <laughs> okay, don't do that. Don't send your archers into bombs. But now we'll deal with that first dragon just like that, and we'll get those rams to help tank for those archers to get a few more shots over there. Some more archers to pick off the air defense. Try to grab the air bombs as well. And just slowly chip through the buildings. It's as boring as usual, but honestly, I haven't done archers in such a long time that it, for some reason, feels like a breath of fresh air. Never thought I would ever be saying that, but eight more packs of archers. Try to snipe the dragon post, then we can just drag that dragon wherever we want. Ram to tank as the archers are about to lose stealth. And then we'll do two packs of archers for this next dragon. One, two, 
three shots. Then we can use a ram up next to tank for those archers. And then those archers will get a ton more damage on top of that inferno tower and finish off the bomb tower, just like that. One, two, three. Now drop a barbarian, and that will tank for those archers to hopefully get some damage on that wizard tower. Does it even finish that wizard tower? Perfect, yes it does. Next pack of archers on the next wizard tower. So you can see we're just slowly chipping through the buildings. This time we're not gonna tank because we are running really low on tanking troops and we're gonna kill that next dragon if possible. So we have 20 seconds as well. Archers are as slow as always. Uh, this time we'll use two archers just like that. And then use that ram to try to, oh, that was poorly timed on my part. But we have gotten a lot of the base. We finished off the compact section and hopefully Miner's Fam can finish from here. And I've gone back to the drawing board and this backside over here that we weren't able to grab with the archers is actually super compact. That's very scary to try to get through with miners, but we did get both Inferno Towers and we pulled a ton of zaps on that very first attack. So I'm gonna be showing you something that you shouldn't be trying at home. If you get the Inferno Towers, you get a lot of single target damage out of the way sometimes. You can finish with a Mountain Golem. Golem is actually one of the best finishers for Dragon Cliffs right now, and hopefully I can show you why. So, Frost on top of the Blast Bow on top of the Dragons will make uh, the back section a lot more manageable. It will save a lot of HP on the Golem. Also slows down the air defenses so that they can't really shoot down my Eye Dragons. Just like so, then we'll use a giant to tank for the Blast Bow and Spear Thrower on the approach. Save some HP on the Golem because the Golem HP is going to be very critical in this attack. Uh, all, all the buildings on the backside are super spread out as well, and that's why I think Golem definitely works here. So Frost like that, Haste fell down, Giant to tank, and then Golem. So you have to be very careful here. Actually, the Inferno Dragons, if the Golem is tanking the enemy super, actually wins the interaction straight up if it doesn't have any other damage, and it's just an air defense on top of the Eye Dragon, it can actually kill the super. But with the Frost Belt, it's super safe, so we can just drop down the Eye Dragon like so. And the Golem has a ton of HP and it can actually tank a lot of Dragon Breaths. Unfortunately, the Dragon did leave the Frost Spell, which was a little bit not ideal. But at this point, the other Dragon will fly into the Frost Spell. And also, the Eye Dragon's still alive. We'll get some chip damage on top of that District Hall. Not that it will matter very much. And then we'll drop down our next Eye Dragon as the District Hall goes down. So just slowly chip through all those dragons. No infernos means my golem is going to be very safe from here. In this case, I bring in the zap spell because just in case, uh, the jump spell is completely useless with golem on a second attack. So might as well have a zap in case there's a low building somewhere or we need something to be reset. But at this point, there is pretty much no more threat to the golem. There's one last air defense on the backside. That one infer dragon killed two enemy supers. So huge value there. And also pulls a Zap Trap. That was a money Inferno Dragon. So if I counted correctly, I've pulled five Zap Traps so far. I think that's all of them on Dragon Cliffs. So at this point, we should be safe. Once the Golem tanks the bottom Spear Thrower, we drop a Barb to kill the top one. Uh, any stuff in the corner, uh, we need to grab that Spell Factory if possible. And then we'll use our last Eye Dragon. Like I said, the Golem or the Eye Dragon wins the interaction against the air defense and we don't even need that because uh, the golem finishes off the air defense straight up and at this point we use the last eye dragon to finish off a spear thrower because we could and golem should have enough hp to power through the backside there's no more zap traps on tracking cliffs we can use one last ram to speed things up or we can just use the zap spell to kill that little hut just in case there's traps get as much bonus goal as possible but yeah we are able to keep alive a ton of troops on this attack and we get a lot more bonus gold than Miner ever would have gotten against this base. So very nicely done here. So Golem is actually an amazing finisher against Dragon Class. Once those Inferno Towers are down, there's basically nothing that can stop you. And finally, let's end off with a replay over here, showing you why two times Miner's Plan is not yet completely dead versus Dragon Cliffs. This is a completely max base and sort of compact. If you can see, the buildings are pretty tightly knit together, but there's a couple of key weaknesses that will make Miner's Plan work against this. And starting off, there's a Dragon close to the outside. When you see a Dragon close to the outside, you want to pull it out, distract it with barbs, rams, and giants to make sure that your Miner's will be safe on the approach and you don't have to spend a Frost Belt early on. You can save those Frost Belts deeper inside of the base. This base is actually pretty 
pretty well teched against miners. You can see there's a lock trap that hits all nine of those miners, and then those miners will slowly work their way inside. Frost on the Empire Tower and Dragon, Frost on the Blast Bone Dragon. And then those miners get hit by the second log on Dragon Cliff, so very nicely placed traps. But you can see this district hall is pretty far away from those dragons, so those dragons actually can't reach my miners while they're getting through all that HP over there. Miners have already taken a ton of damage from logs. They were up for long enough because that air bombs has quite a bit of HP. We try to zap, try to slow down those dragons a little bit, but they're dying off really fast. You can see that nerf in action. The miners have a lot less HP. They blow up a lot faster than usual, but those minor death bombs just do so much damage. More zaps. We're hitting basically every single trap on this approach but we still were able to get a huge first hit against this base using those distraction troops instead of the 10th miner is so good for helping you save your spells for deeper inside of the base and we're just going to finish off with another minor spam attack once again this time we're going to come in from this side use a barb to tank for the dragon on the approach keep the dragon away from my miners for as long as possible and those miners should hopefully be able to avoid those dragon breaths by moving just far away and we use the last bar to try to pull the dragon away but not quite working out there but actually it doesn't shoot at my miners at all as they work their way inside and that bar will also tank this next dragon as it, my miners work their way inside but I'm holding on to my frost spells to see where they're needed. All five dragons are converging on my miners and it's getting really scary. Those miners burst through that little hut quick enough to where those dragons will never shoot. But before those miners wake up on top of that spell factory, we have to be careful and use some barbarians to drag those dragons away. If I was not careful there, I would have literally lost all nine of my miners to those three dragons shooting at them. But at this point, now we can drop both of our frost in this clump up section of the base and now those dragons will never be able to be fast enough to shoot down all of my miners from here there's just two more bomb towers on the back section and that one bomb tower won't blow up all my miners so we'll have plenty of miner hp to get through the rest of this base the blasters are down the inferno towers are down the dragons are in the frostbow and they cannot catch up to the miners at this point so we are completely home free from here as those miners rip through those last few buildings on this base. Miner spam can still work when you find the right situations to make it happen. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed today's attacks. Miner spam is still probably the best attack against dragon cliffs. Any lower level dragon cliffs usually gets absolutely dunked on by miners, but those maxed ones with more compact layouts usually want to come in with a different entry to set up the two shot and make sure you never fail a dragon cliffs ever again. But big shout out to Bilal from our Discord server for being the next person to reach level 100. I know I am super late on this. Sorry for that. I have a ton of other people I have to get to as well. But thank you for being a part of our Discord server and making it as great as it is. Link in the description below to join. It's the best place to learn how to get better in the clan capital. But like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and take care.